Welcome to the R video tutorial on random number generation part 3. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, in this one we're going to do a simple simulation study that chains this idea of random numbers together and this will lead us to motivation for our next topic. Uh, the importance of this is, is that random events keep going automatically uh, and they, they can chain together and add to each other and it causes things to behave differently than we would expect. So let's play with our little example here. It's going to be very short and small. So what we want to have is we want to do a small simulation study that for a bus route that has three pickup stops and one drop off. Simulation must account for time between stops, number of riders getting on at each stop, the time it takes to each rider to get on, and we're going to assume all riders get off at the fourth stops. So we need to take into account how long it takes to get everybody off the bus. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start defining some variables here. So first thing we're going to do is time between stops. Okay, um, I'm going to use T1 for the time that it takes to get between stops. So between stop number one and stop number two will be R gamma because gamma is a positive number. We're going to pull one of these for right now so you'll see how this works. And we're going to say it will take them, let's say, if it takes them seven minutes, then we would put 70 and divide it by 10. Uh, this will have a mean of 7. Okay, that doesn't mean it will take 7 seconds or 7 minutes to do this. But if we looked at this in minutes, it's going to take 6.986 minutes. Run it again, it's a little bit over 7. Uh, six and a half minutes, a little over under 6 minutes. So it randomly varies around seven. I'm gonna do the same thing for T2, the time it takes to get between stop number two and stop number three. So here we're gonna have one of these, and let's say this one takes six minutes, and we're gonna put 10 here, that way and this has a mean of six. And then the last one uh, will be the time it takes to get between, so the first one was between one and two, the next one was between two, uh, and three, and this is going to be between three and four, so R gamma. Uh, and here we're going to say maybe this takes 12 minutes, so that would be 120 and 10. And the reason I'm making these numbers up uh, is because I understand how gamma distribution works, and this will allow us to have a, something that's reasonable for what we have here. And, but it will have the mean of 12 minutes. Okay, so when I run each of these, we can see what the values come out at. So I have 6, 5, and 11. Uh, and this is in seconds, and we could pretending that we can measure down to the minute seconds or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's for a simulation because we're trying to simulate this. Okay, so uh, now we need to have the number of riders at each stop. So number of riders at each stop because we need to take this to account because it takes longer to put more riders on. So uh, I'm going to put this R1, which will be the riders from the first one. Now this one is going to be Poisson, okay, because it's a number of events in a specific time period. So here we're going to draw one from this, and let's say at the first one, on average, there's about five people. So this will have a mean of five. Same thing at the second one. We have one draw. Let's say we're going to have on average here nine people. So we'll put up here our mean of nine people. So that way we can keep this straight. And at the third stop, it's closer and we're going to have a mean of 15. So this will have a mean of 15, and we're not worried about the bus having a maximum number of seats or anything right now. Uh, that would just further complicate things. Okay, so this has a mean of 15. Now what we need to do is account for the time it takes to load the riders. Okay, so um, I'm going to use some things that I know about this, but just roll with me so you can get the idea here. So this is going to be a gamma as well because it takes positive time. Uh, here I'm going to use R1 as the alpha in this thing, and I'm going to divide it by 4. And that's essentially saying the 4 means it's going to take about each rider about 15 seconds to get on the bus. 
uh, and R1 accounts for how many people are getting on the bus. And I'm going to do this again uh, for each one of these, but I have to change it because of the number of riders. So at the second stop, I've got riders two, riders three, and I need to make this the uh, number of loading time, loading time two, loading time three, and we've got this. So let's just see what these come out to be. So if I ran the R1 through R3, I get five, 10, and 20. Notice I had five, nine, and 15. So they do have variation in it. And if I were to run it again, I get a different set, four, three, 21, and so on. Now here, this is going to account for the fact that all of these riders are getting on together. So in the L's, notice that this one, there were four riders and it took about 30 seconds to get them on uh, or so. And then here we had three riders, took half a minute. Uh, so this one was really fast. Uh, the last one uh, to get 21 riders on, it took 5.9 minutes. So just keep that in mind, we're in minutes here. So here we go, we're gonna run with this. Now what we're gonna try to do is take the total time involved. But in order to do this, we need to account for the people getting off. So before we do that, let's put up here unload time. And this will be dependent on how many people there are all together. So I'm going to make this call this U1. This is going to be gamma as well because models waiting times reasonably well. Uh, and then here I'm going to put in, well, there's one, R1 people on there, R2 people on here, and R3 people on here. Okay? And then I'm going to divide this by four again, saying it takes each one on average about 15 seconds to get off of the bus. And if I were to run this, you can see what U1 comes out to be uh, when I scroll down over here in the environment. So it takes about seven minutes to unload all of these people. And you say, well, that's a little bit long. But if you think about it, it's a bus and it has 28 people on it. Uh, so. It could take that long depending on what type of bus it is and whatnot. And that's just based off our assumptions. So the total time involved will be T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus L1, time it takes to get them on, L2, L3, plus the time it is to dump them off. Uh, so here is U1 uh, uh, in here. And notice that our total time here is 36 minutes in order to pull this off. So a trip from beginning to end uh, for the driver from the time he hits the first stop to the uh, he arrives, it's about 36 minutes. Uh, on this particular one, this is a simulation and then we're using random number generation. So if I come up here to the top and run it all again, you can see I get 38 minutes this time. And the next time I get 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 33 minutes, and you can see that there's a wide range of variability in how long it takes to get between here and there. We've had it so far as high as 45, and looks like as low as 34. Uh, maybe we had a 32 in there. The point is, is this allows us to get a feel for what sorts of values might be reasonable in terms of times. Now, this motivates our next topic, which is Essentially what we're trying to do is repeat something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. We want to, in a sense, what's called loop through this. We want to do it again and again and again and again in a repeating loop. So uh, it comes from the idea of running a tape in a loop. If you remember tapes uh, a long time ago, some people of you might, you could take the tube or the tape, make it into a loop and play it. And it would just keep doing itself over and over and over and over again. And you would keep hearing it. All right. So uh, we're going to move on to the next video where we learn how to do, in our, this case, four loops.